Huh. Well, would you look at that? It's Christmas Eve. You'd figure I'd be putting up some sort of holiday wish list today, but... Nah. Well, actually, I guess it is sort of like a wish list. Today, I'm going to be running through my top 10 personal favorite cards from the upcoming set Absolute Power Force, as well as the upcoming structure deck Machina Mayhem. There's not going to be much time to spend on each individual card, so let's get the ball rolling. Number 10, Kawaki Meru Urnite. Now, I have never been a fan of the Kawaki Meru theme, and I think Konami really should stop trying to shove them down the players' throats, but Urnite is a wonderful support card nonetheless. It serves to unify the deck as a theme, using the Iron Core as a means to summon other Kawaki Meru from the deck. That toolbox aspect, combined with its MASSIVE body, gives the Kawaki Meru a solid, reliable way to win games, and I commend that. Number 9. Bad End Queen Dragon. This is a really fun card for decks that are loaded with a ton of continuous spell and trap cards, namely Crystal Beasts. It actually helps Crystal Beasts immensely by being bigger than any of the CBs themselves, as well as giving them a control factor they desperately need. And, on top of that, unlike Hamon Lord of Striking Thunder, Bad End Queen Dragon works off of the natural Crystal Beast mechanic without being detrimental to it. Good stuff. Number 8. Gravekeeper's Steely. If anything gives the Gravekeeper's theme a real push forward, it's this card, not the new monsters. Steely allows the deck to play far more aggressively than before, in that the monsters now become expendable and reusable resources so you don't have to worry about maintaining them. Just fetch them back with this incredible plus one. I certainly like the prospect of being able to use Gravekeeper's Spy up to, what, nine times? Don't you? Number seven, Battle Fader. In truth, this is probably the best card in Absolute Power Force, so it may seem strange that I'm not ranking it higher, but well, like I said, this is just a li list bleh, of personal favorites. Many players have been asking for something to slow the game down, and Battle Fader definitely delivers. It basically makes OTKs by battle impossible, and turns Sangan into a legitimate answer to a field of huge monsters. This thing will probably get really annoying especially in tandem with Dimensional Alchemist, so I'll likely be packing the Crush Shoot combo in the future to deal with it. Number 6. Reversal World. Finally! A trap version of Shield and Sword. Oh man. However, there are a couple of differences. First of all, the attack and defense swap is indefinite. Secondly, it only touches effect monsters. This thing is going to be a really fun tech card, especially in Gemini's. Your big beaters stay big, while your opponent's beaters become miserable excuses for monsters that hopelessly crash into yours. It's very easy to make a one-for-one -one trade or better with this card. It's great. Number 5. Claymore Dud. The traps they've been making lately have only gotten more and more interesting. Claymore Dud offers an inventive way to just wreck overly aggressive opponents. I see this card being a very big asset to future Gladiator Beast builds after the set is released. At worst, it's a one for one. At its best, it becomes a minus three for your opponent if they throw MST or Heavy at your set Claymore Dud while they control two attack position monsters. Really, really brilliant card. Number four, Kotalos. It's so cute! I bet Doc loves this little critter too. Kotalos can send an Umi you control to the graveyard to send two cards your opponent controls to the graveyard. A baby Daedalus, so to speak, 
but honestly, I think it's much better than Daedalus. It only takes a normal summon to put it on the table. You can retrieve it with salvage. It doesn't destroy anything, so it easily addresses threats like Stardust Dragon without a hitch. Truly, truly great theme support. It makes me want to play the deck, to be honest. Um, number three, Harmony's Treasure. Who doesn't love a balanced draw card? I've been looking forward to trying this out in Junk and Debris as an alternate way to sift through the deck. It may actually prove to be better than Allure of Darkness in the long run due to the synergy with Pot of Avarice, but only time will tell. This card is also crazy good in the Dragoonity deck, as well as Blue Eyes White Dragon Turbo builds. Helping out the underdogs is always appreciated. Number 2, Machina Frontline. I've been hoping for something that would add some more consistency to the Morphtronic deck, and ding ding ding, we have a winner! I don't know what else it's good in right now, but this card has a lot of potential to bring machine-oriented decks back into the spotlight. Machina Frontline is really great from a flavor standpoint, too, reinforcing the whole concept of machines being replaceable ad infinitum. And finally, my favorite card from Absolute Power Force is Breakdraw. I love machines, I love seeing equip spells that are worth using, and I love Konami for printing this card. By itself, Breakdraw has inspired me to build a machine based deck on Power Tool Dragon. Plus oneing a card that generates plus ones sounds pretty awesome to me. I wish I could say more about it, but Break Draw is really a simple card, so I can't. Um, goodbye.